this webinar is proudly brought to you by IG South Africa. Visit igmarkets.co.za to open your trading account today. So Warren's doing profit taking. To my mind, hardest part of trading is when to take profit. Your your stop loss is easy. Stop loss triggered, you take you get out, you limit your loss, but it's where do you take the profit? So Warren and I were chatting about potential webcasts. We thought this is a great idea. Certainly we've got a, a full web, webinar this afternoon, a lot of people in. So agreed with that. As always, we'll take questions. You've got questions, drop them in the Q&A box. We'll take them at the end. Uh, in the immediate, Warren, over to you or yours. Good afternoon. Thank you, Simon. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, look, profit taking is one of those things that every trader struggles with once you've gotten over the hurdle of taking your stop losses. One of the common things would be yeah, taking, your, taking your profit too early. Uh, that's your second risk after learning to take your stop losses. So today what I've done is I've put together pretty much what I use on the CFD side as you saw in the, the intro slide. It is calculated based on CFDs for shares. I use something called trade expectancy that just gives me a really good feeling about, about everything that I've done. Um, and it's basically the result that is created between your hit rate, your risk reward and your position sizing. I've excluded position sizing for this presentation simply uh, this was aimed more at the beginner to intermediate, and when you include position sizing, that becomes really uh, technical and advanced. This is a basic uh, idea of how it works. Hit rate is 50%, so you're right half the time, and your risk reward ratio works out at 1 to 2. So for every rand that you're losing on a stop loss, you're making 2 rand on your winners. The expectancy is calculated as follows you've got 4 losers at a rand you minus four, you've got four winners at two rand, so you're at positive eight, net result is a four rand profit. Your expectancy is then that profit divided by the total number of trades, so four divided by eight. So in this example, we've got a 50 cent profit per trade. In other words, out of every eight trades that we make on the system, we're making 50 cents for each one. And that tells us that we should keep doing what we're doing as we are net profitable. Uh, I'm going to take you into my Feb and March results. Um, I've made it a little bit more uh, towards what you guys would be looking at yourselves. Uh, every market is different, and I do at the end cover a little bit on the Aussie and Forex for those that are interested. So I just reduced my trades down to 20,000 exposure and based off a 100,000 Rand account. In those two months, there were 15 winning trades with a total profit of 16,400. The average winning per trade was 1,092 Rand. There were nine losers. The average loss was 571 Rand a trade or a total of 5,000 Rand. That leaves me a total profit of 11,200 bucks. The risk reward ratio works out at one to three. So for every time I lost a Rand, when I was right, I made three Rand. The hit rate was 60%. Uh, these are good numbers, by the way. Uh, you hit rate at 60%, you can consider yourself uh, you know, having a really good run at it. Your trade expectancy is the 11,000 divided by 24 trades. So expect 468 Rand profit per trade. If you take off costs on this example, it works out at about 375 Rand profit uh, per the 24 trades at 100 Rand round term. So again, you've got to just work out what your broker is charging you on on commission. Now that we know what every trade has produced, we can actually create a plan. The outliers, the biggest winner in these examples was 2,090 Rand. The biggest loser was 1,680 Rand. So now I know that if, you know, if I get it really wrong, I'm in for a 6% loss, that 1,600, and if I get it right, I'm in for a 10% gain. I can then use that in my planning going forward. Those cash values can be placed into an underlying share price move as a percentage. And this enables me to then plan my targets and my stop losses. The largest winner is around 10% of the underlying share price. And the largest loser is 6% of the share price. As you can see, it was 2,000 Rand profit. It was based on a 20,000 Rand exposure trade. The average winner is only 5%. And as you saw there, we had 1,100 Rand roughly and that works out 5% profit and the average loser was 2.8. We're not going to spend much time on stop losses. Profit taking can now be planned according to the statistics of that trading style. 
In other words, that trading system produced these results combined with you, the trader. Okay, so you're going to have to really learn your trading system. You're going to have to learn the instrument that you trade, and you're going to have to learn, uh, you know, learn how you trade as a person. In this scenario, we can see that the five percent was, you know, being the average is a good trade. So for that trading system, five percent is a good trade. You then consider that to be a good profit. Anything over and above that is a bonus. There were only two of those winning trades were were over. Um, sorry, were around 10%. Uh, the rest of them did average out at around five. The first thing that we want to do after we've entered the trade is to cover cost. How do we do that? Well, you have a look at your your trade. All right, so. Just as the stop loss should be a mathematical probability to prevent huge losses on the account, the profit take is also a statistical measure. Everything that you do in trading can be reduced to the numbers. You can work out percentages, you can work out average profits, you can work out average losses in rents. All right, so profit taking and uh, stop losses are the only real science that you can put into trading, and the math doesn't lie. Okay, so profit taking is also a statistical measure. And we use it to maximize returns, but I also want to ensure a profit once the danger zone has passed. That doesn't mean we operate on targets. I just want to make sure that if the trade goes in my favor and then changes direction, because it starts going against me, I'm still going to bank that profit. Covering cost is a good place for you to learn how to scale out of a trade. Uh, people find it very difficult in general. I have a thousand shares. Uh, we then find it difficult to close out the first 300, then another 300, and then the balance. So those last 400 shares, we just can't seem to get that right. It takes a bit of practice. So my recommendation is if you begin by covering cost, uh, that will teach you that scaling out of a trade is not the end of the world. Okay, uh, I'll do cover this in a little bit more detail. When the share gets up by 3.5%, I want to exit enough shares to cover the brokerage of the entire trade, in other words, the in and the out. Now, obviously, on the out, you can't get the exact numbers, but you're going to get close. You can just use the 5% rule. So if the share goes up 5%, what is my cost going to be? Work it out and say, right, my total cost is whatever, 600 Rand. Then you sell enough shares to cover the 600 Rand cost. Um, if, wait, there yeah, we've gone blank again. Okay. Once that three and a half percent is out the way, it can be considered target one, but not really. You know, it's a cost covering thing. Once the trade is free of costs, then that little weight is off your shoulders. You've already paid for the trade; it's now free of charge. Target number two would be that five percent mark. The share goes up five percent. We then cover thirty percent of the trade, if it is a large enough position. If you're only trading smaller positions, so let's say you, you know, your average exposure value is 10,000 Rand, it becomes very expensive to close out 30%, 30%, 30%. Uh, it is better to close out half of the trade. So you close out 5,000 Rand's worth, and you'd leave the other 5,000 Rand on the table. You raise the stop loss to that 3.5% mark. So once the share's gone up 5%, close half and move your stop up. Even if you left your entry price as your, uh, sorry, if you left, left the original um, stop loss or you moved it to entry price, you can do that. Just work out that it's not going to lose money. Uh, if the market pulls back, so you know, you're up 5%, your original stop loss was 3%, you've now got an 8% loss, you can work out what 8% is on that balance of 5,000 Rand. If that ends up with the trade being in a total loss, don't make the trade or raise your stop loss. Target number three can be 10% and the stop is then trailed by 3.5% behind the share price moving upwards. If 10% is hit, you can sell another 30% if your trade's big enough and your stop loss then becomes 6.5% profit. So once the market goes up, if it gets to 10%, you close out another 30% of your trade. If it pulls back and leaves you a 6.5% profit, you can close the whole trade, and you would have then banked 5% plus the 
six and a half percent. Uh, I know the, the percentages can get a little rough around the edges, but if you sit down and actually work out your trading, then the numbers will make a lot more sense and you could put it down to rands and cents. If the trade is too small for 30%, okay, so to get out at 30% at 5, get another 30% out at 10, and then leave the balance, if your trade is not big enough for that, you can keep the 50% through that 10% target and just keep trailing up your stops. In other words, you'd only have you have three exits, one to cover cost, one at 5%, and the other one would be left to trail the stop. As you don't take profit at 10%, you just keep trailing your stop behind the market by 3.5%. I know there are going to be a lot of questions. Please write them down and ask them at the end. Trailing stops for good profits. Personally, I prefer trailing stops uh, better than any target trading I've ever done. I quite simply, I you know, started out targeting Fibonacci extensions. And then you start chart patterns. You know, the triangle, you take the size of the, the biggest distance on the triangle, that's going to be a breakout target. And it just seemed that every time I, I took profit, I ended up watching the market continue in my direction for another 5 or 10 or 15, 20%. Uh, or if you trade in indices, then a good couple of hundred points. All right. Over time, I learned to trade the trend. And the only way to hold a position within a trend is to trail the stop loss and not worry about targets. Targets are something that are that you're predicting into the future and we know that that can never happen. So the, the next risk trading with targets is that it doesn't hit your target. So it falls five cents short of the target, you don't close the trade and the next thing you know you are wiping out that trade. Okay. So trailing the stop guarantees a maximized return. Not a maximum return, a maximized return. But it'll never pick the turning point. You'll never get it to the tick. You'll never get the last cents on the table. But what it does do is it allows the market to breathe while you hold in the bigger moves. And that would be within a long-term trend. The market's going in a direction. It pulls back. We know that prices don't go in a straight line. It pulls back. You're still in it because you're trailing your stop. Any target-based trader would probably be out of the trade already. How do we use the targets? So I gave you two targets. We've got 5% and 10%. There are ways to use these targets while still implementing the trailing stop. Okay, so contrary to the previous slide, the target can be used as a point of reference. So let's say I get into the trade today and that particular trade goes, goes I don't know, what, 7 8%. Okay, now my target is 10% is target 2. It's past target one, straight through it, went up, and it's now 80% of, of the second target. You can simply close out two-thirds of your trade position. Okay? It is okay to take a quick, sizable profit. So you take 70% uh, of the trade off the table, and you then leave that balance of a third to do what it does. You then trail your stop in, and you leave that last portion to run. Holding a full position because this is the next question, of course, so I'm going to be asked, why do we scale out? Holding the full position all the way to a target leads to panic exit. So if I get to 5%, I close my whole position. I don't catch the, the next move if it happens. If I close my whole position at 10%, I'll never catch a 30% trade. Okay, because when you get to 10% and it's a full position, the numbers can be quite scary. It is an emotional thing. If the target is taken out, <clears throat> goes through 10%, you have a reference point to trail the stop to. So if the market goes up in your favor, you're up 12%, you can trail your stop to 10. If you still like the trade, hold the remaining portion. Closing the full position often leads to profit limitation. In other words, if I trade to a target, I'm limiting my profit. If I trail my stop too tight, I'm limiting my profit. You have to find a nice balance uh, between taking actual profits and taking the profits too soon. It is impossible to get it 100% right. You can have a 35% profit trade and it goes up 60%. Okay? It just pulls back just enough to stop you out and then it continues. I've got an example of that later on. All right, so target is taken out. You've got the reference point. You can trail your stop. If you still like the trade, hold the remaining portion. Here's an example of coronation. Uh, it just kept making new highs. All right, that's the 2013 chart uh, from June to December. The uh, 
my system fired, you can see there the green triangle at the bottom. The blue line is the entry price. The red line is the initial hard stop. Percentages on the left hand side it was a 5% stop loss. All right. It went up. This orange line over here you can see is just below resistance. That was target 3 at 10%. It broke straight through it and it never again returned below that target price. So you're sitting with a third of your trade still in the market and you're leaving it to run. The market went up to, uh, sorry, coronation went up to 85 rand, it pulled back. I used in this example a swing low. All right, so instead of, once we pass the 10%, there's no limit. It could go 20%, it could go 20, 30, 40, 50, 100%, we never know. Trail the stop, use the previous swing low, which is pretty much what happened here. The orange line is the previous swing low. Market continued up. A little bit of a hitch over here. Might have been panicked out a little bit, but the idea would be to wait for market to come up, make a low, it failed to make a new high. It started to form what would be called a, a bull flag, but we're already long. The stop loss is triggered when it breaks the swing low, which is that little tick on the bottom of the candle. It breaks through, exit the trade, closing below the swing, balance of the positions exited, 35% profit, and interest for that period on the CFD is around 4.5%. It's six months. All right, so using the swing lows, once your profit target is taken out, can be really profitable. But the chances of you having the full position in uh, and being able to hold for a 35% run, very slim. Uh, but if you're only sitting with a third of your original position size, it is much easier. Okay, I did bring some advanced techniques in. Um, if that doesn't make any sense to you, you're welcome to send me an email or ask me some questions uh, if we can't cover it in the Q&A afterwards. Each instrument has its own personality and we can use that to predict exits based on historical volatility combined with your system performance. So Coronation is one of those fantastically trendy in stocks. Uh, it just keeps on making new highs you know, after new high after new high. That has a very low volatility overall if you looked at the chart for five years. But if you looked at something like Anglo-American, it's got much bigger swings. As it'll go up 20%, it'll come down that same 20%. You can tailor your exits to the instruments. On the share side, honestly, I've just kept it at uh, that 3.5%, 5%, 10%, leave a third to run until it gets stopped out. It is a decent way to take profits on higher leveraged instruments such as the Aussie and Forex. Okay, so we now combine the inherent volatility, the feel of the market, the look of the market into the higher leveraged products. You have to know your system. I haven't covered Forex here, there's not enough time, but if you are a, an FX trader, check the statistics of your system. So what I did on the Aussie over the last three years, I calculated what the best and worst points were. Take your entry trigger, calculate the highest points reached on the system before a pullback. So when my system fires along, I know what I'm expecting. Calculate the average duration of the trade. You know, it's how long does that trade last on average? You can only really do this on, on the, the intraday charts uh, to try and figure out how long coronation is going to stay in a trade is a, really a waste of time. Uh, the same with any of the other shares. But on your currencies and on the indices, you can do this. Calculate the maximum profit and the maximum loss if you just followed the system. Also work out what would be the maximum extension after the entry price. Calculate expectancy for confidence. If I know that every trade I make is going to average me 500 bucks, then I know every trade is going to average me 500 rand. That gives me a lot of confidence to pull the trigger. Calculate the average return from entry trigger to the final exit trigger. It's going to be much easier on the next slide. Here's an example of one of my hourly systems. The hourly trading system has an average elasticity of 1,200 points from initial entry to the first pullback. In other words, my signal fires a trade. I know that I can expect an average of 1,200 points before the market starts to pull back properly. That is what I make my first target to exit one of the contracts. You can do this all the all me, it doesn't matter. So at 1200 points, I want to take my first contract off the table. When the 1200 is exceeded, the next average 
reaches between 1600 and 1800. I haven't pinned it down because it's literally between 1600 and 1800 points before it pulls back again a second time. In that area, I'm looking to exit the second time. So once I get over 1600 points, I'm looking to exit another contract. The average return from entry trigger to exit trigger is 1,600. In other words, from from the uh, the trade firing to the to firing the exit, it gets about 1,600 points. The balance of the position is then closed when the exit triggers. So again, it's three uh, it's three exits. The first two target based. The last one system based. The largest one I've had is around 3,000 points in the last three years. And that was from trigger to trigger. The largest loser was 880 points, trigger to trigger. And that happened, at a, it was late in the afternoon, entered the trade, the next day it gapped against me, 800 points down before my system told me to exit. Knowing that gives me confidence that my biggest loser in the last three years is 8,800 points a contract. So I can now work out how many contracts I can take to handle the worst loser, statistically speaking. Okay, that just gives you a little bit of confidence to know what your biggest loser is. To know that my average return is going to be 1,200 points, if I wanted to, I could simply make that my target for every trade. Uh, the downside, of course, is that I don't pick up the, the 1,600 or the 1,800 points. That does come around often enough to make it a statistical possibility. Uh, guys, these are just averages. They do not remove your ability to read the market as an important point. You do have to understand your charts, if you are a chartist, of course. Uh, you have to understand the charts. What is a chart pattern? Maybe some of the candle patterns so that you can pick turning points. Okay, What they do for you is enable you to judge the current conditions against the history of your system and gives you confidence to scale out of the position as well as hold for maximum reach. If I can get 2,500 points, I'd rather have that than 1,200. The reason for scaling out is simply emotional control. You don't necessarily want to be holding these huge positions trying to scrape out the absolute best 3,000 point move. It doesn't work like that because more often than not, it doesn't hit the 3,000 mark. So keep your head about you. Work out your system's best performance, worst performance and go look at your historical trades and work out why your system is working but you're still not making profit. Uh, and it's almost guaranteed that you haven't been scaling out of your profitable trades and your winners are turning into losers because you're not scaling out. Adjust your targets, try and set two or three areas where you're going to scale out of the trade and try and leave a portion of the trade to catch the entire trend. If you make 10% and that last third then ends up closing out at 7% or 6% or even 5%, you've still banked more than if you closed your whole position out at a 5% profit. All right, thank you, everyone. I hope you found that interesting. And please, uh, there's my contact details. You're welcome to, to send me an email. Thanks, Warren. Uh, folks, if you've got questions, put them in the, in the GoToWebinar question uh, app. We've got a couple coming through already. Uh, the blank screen... The rebooting worked. Citrix are, are busy investigating. No answer, and I don't. I, I've never seen it before, so I, I, I'm dumbfounded. Great question from from Justin. He says, "Do you have a time in trade stop? In other words, you know, often yes. if nothing's happened, <laughs> you, take, you get out." Um, what I have is I understand my systems, so I know, for instance, the Wolsey one. I know really well. Uh, its average time in place is about three days. If, it, if the trader is not doing anything and I'm three days in, I'll exit. Uh, on the shares, it's very difficult. Uh, each share is very different. The volatility is a different time to, to exit is different. Uh, what I do if I'm long, then my stop loss is often when interest equals my stop loss. So if see if the interest equals my stop loss, I'll then close the trade based on that. Yeah, it's a good point. Otherwise, you, you, you end up with almost two stop losses in a sense. Yeah. Raymond's asking about, he says, scaling out. And, and i got to say, I, I scale out as well on, on, on my trades. I, I, I take profits as, as, as it goes my direction. Uh, Raymond's saying, 
can incur a lot of brokerage charges as well. Uh, my answer is yes, and 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 Raymond, the 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 the, the corollary to that answer is, you, you we've got to be what's the word I'm looking for? We, we, we've got to be militant about brokerage charges. We've got to find as cheap as possible. Obviously, within reason, we don't want to go to a bucket shop, but we, we need to manage those bro brokerage costs. Warren, you got a comment on that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, position sizing. If yeah. your positions are too small, you cannot scale out. Uh, you know, I don't... I, personally, I think under 20,000 Rand exposure doesn't allow for scaling out even half the position. Uh, but you'd have to work it out yourself and, and see how much is that. Remember, your first trade, you're going to close enough shares to cover all the costs. So if you are going to exit twice, plus the initial, that'll be three brokerage fees. You can work out what that value is. Mm -hmm. If that value is 700 Rand, you close enough shares to bank 700 Rand, and then you don't matter about scaling out because you've covered those costs. Just don't scale out more often than you calculate it. Yeah, gotcha. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, question coming through about uh, patent targets. You touched on that, Warren. Uh, in, in essence, the question was, should I take part profit at a patent target? Um, your, your take on that was you, you, you're certainly banking some at the targets. Um, on the patent targets, it, it really depends because if I get a, a triangle breakout at a new high, so in other words, the, the previous high was a new high, the probability is good that it's going to exceed that patent target. All right, so I then keep my 5%, 10% rule and then leave it to run. Mm -hmm. On the Aussie, uh, I just follow my system. I don't worry about patent targets. If I'm trading a pattern uh, that has its own set of rules, and then I would take it at those pattern targets. But if I'm, so remember to separate your trades. If you're trading the trend, you have to leave it to run. Yeah. If you are trading a pattern that does have a target, and I would tend to take half my position at the target and then see what happens with the balance. Uh, and again, depends on market condition. Yeah, what am I doing overall? Great question coming through. Monitoring this and doing all the calculations every trade surely is daunting. Surely then trading less but efficiently is better. I'm going to say two things. Yes, trade less <laughs> is efficient and better. I'm also going to say set up fancy Excel spreadsheets. So you just plug in a number and it spits out the answer. And you also, yeah, you do this five or six times. You're actually so good at it, you can see it on the chart. Yeah, also a good point. Um, it's really... The hard part is understanding percentages in the first place. And that a share of a thousand rand value, if that moves five percent, it's the same result if, if the share is twenty rand. Yeah. Five percent is five percent. Uh, and then it becomes really simple. You can just quickly uh, calculate. You can see it on the chart. Just a bit of practice. And then a question aimed at me, uh, how do I exit? Yeah, I, I'm doing a similar but same. I mean, I'm not as nuanced as uh, Warren's done a, a lot more math and homework here. So, um, for example, my lazy, my lazy Aussie, uh, I, I scale out. I take my first uh, bunch of profits at around 1,500, 2,000 points, another bunch at about three or 4,000, depending how quickly it moves. If we get to those targets in like a week or so, then I would look for the upper level. If it's a bit slower, I look for the lower level. And then I, I get stopped out. I, I, I take it on stops. I, I, I used to bank my, my you know, whatever number of points, and I was always just missing the big runners. But again, that's very much trend-based. On my weekly lazy trading, where I'm getting ETFs, I'm not banking anything. And, and I've got a trade there in the indie, which is, I think I got in at about, I don't know, 22, 24,000 points two and a half years ago. Still long of that. I uh, haven't banked a cent, just, just letting it ride. It does mean I get a little far away from my stop loss, but uh, I, I'm more than happy with that um, because, in truth, if the trend is strong, I don't get back to my stop loss very quickly. Two and a half years on the end is proof of that. Question from Raymond. What about scaling in on a pullback? Warren, do you scale into the trade or do you, do you get into the trade full boots and then scale out? 99% uh, of the time I'm scaling out. Yeah. Uh, there are times where I will re-enter a, a trade that has been stopped out. Uh, so let's say yeah, the, the market goes in my favor 10%, uh, then scale out, I'm, I'm left with a balance of 30% of my trade size. The market comes down and gives me a really good buy signal. I will consider buying it again, but that new trade would include the last 30%. I would then work out my total stop loss, adding the two trades together, and if it is viable, I'll make the trade, but that is really rare 
I don't do that often. Yeah, I, I do it. And I'm thinking, so if, if I'm in a trade, like a lazy trade, for example, and I get another trigger whilst in the trade, um, and it, it's not going to happen in the lazy because I use the same entry exit, but on the on the weekly lazies, if I get another trigger, as long as my stop loss is now in profit, i.e. I've got no no initial rands at risk, um, I will I will add back into it, but only on a trigger, not just on a, on a random pullback. And, and it does happen. I, I've reloaded into my Indian two and a half years, probably three times, maybe. Um, not a not a common occurrence, but certainly comes through. Uh, ladies and gents, well, again, I'm, it comes back to your system, yeah. Yeah, no, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, your your system will tell you what to do. Yeah. Uh, the problem, sorry, that just the last thing on scaling in, is the last trade is going to hurt you. <laughs> well, that, that was so always my If you keep scaling in, <laughs> if you keep scaling in, you end up with this big position at the top where it turns. Yeah, that, that, and that's can wipe what out I found. Thirty percent of your profit. Yeah. The, the hard way that 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 it was exactly that. I think I did it in quarters. I can't remember. We're going back to sort of turn of the century. I was doing it in quarters, and by the time <laughs> I put my fourth quarter into the market, um, it was all, almost always the top, and I just. You know, opened a position as it turned on me, um, and yeah, I had some of the, the first quarter made profit, uh, but the fourth quarter gave it all back. So I, I, I pretty much quit that. Ladies and gents, we're we're over time, and I'm not seeing any questions, so we will park it there. My thanks to all of you for attending, uh, and Warren, great presentation, exactly what we're looking for. Really appreciate it, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, Simon. Keep up. This webinar was proudly brought to you by IG South Africa. Visit igmarkets.co.za to open your trading account today.